Now one of the first things that we need to do to install Java on Windows 10 is to head over to Oracle and download the JDK. So we need to go over to the Oracle website, select the JDK for our system, and then download it to our computer. I'm going to jump over to Chrome now and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, to install the Java JDK for Windows, I just want to come over to a browser. I am going to use uh, Google Chrome and open that up. You can really use any browser you'd like. And I'm going to say Windows 10 JDK, like so. Just search on that. And now you can see that the first one is the installation. That is uh, directions on how to install. We actually want to go to the Java SE. That's Java Standard Edition Download. So I'm going to click on that. And now we can see that it's coming up with several editions for us. The Java 13, that is the most recent release, but this is not an LTS release. We want to be working with the LTS release. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. You can see here in the Java 11.05, that is the current LTS release that we want to use. So I'm going to grab that right now, and I'm just going to click on download. And let me scroll up a little bit here. And we can see this is the Java SE development kit, exactly what we want. We have to click here to accept the license agreement. And now we need to come down to Windows. And I am going to take the executable. So this is a, a binary executable that, that will run the installer. So I'm going to click on that. Now, Oracle does require you to uh, create an account. I do have a very old one that I'm going to go ahead and utilize here. I'm going to click on sign in. And if you don't already have an Oracle account, you can click on create account and set up an account. And you can see here the download has started and it's going to take a few seconds for that to download from the Oracle site. Once we have the Java installer downloaded to our system, we need to run it and have it install the Java JDK on our system. Now, once that download completes, we can just come over here since we downloaded the executable. We're just going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see that Windows is asking me if I want to go ahead and install it. I'm going to say yes. And I don't need Chrome open anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And now we can see that we have the installer up on the screen. And I am just going to uh, step through this, say next. And we uh, definitely want the development tools and source code. So let's go ahead and uh, continue with that. And also note that it's going to be installing to C drive program files, Java JDK 11.0.5. So that, that's important to remember the path to where your Java is installed. See that the Java process uh, goes by pretty quick. And at this point, the Java installer is done and I can click on close here. Okay, at this point, the installer did install Java onto our system but it's not fully configured for our use. So we want to set it up so that we can execute Java from the command line and also programs can find Java. So what I want to do is come in here and I'm going to click into the file explorer and let's go to this PC and I'm going to double click on that. And Java is going to be installed under program files. Remember we saw that in the inst installer. And here we can see this is where the, the Java JDK has been installed. So what I want to do is come up here and I'm going to click on this and right click and say copy. So I'm going to copy that path to the clipboard because I want to set that up as an environment variable. So I'm done with this. I'm going to close this window. Now come down here to the window on the lower left. I'm going to right click and say system. And I'm just going to do ENV and I want to edit the system environment variables. Now you can do it if you're the only user on the system. I prefer to do the system environment variables. So I'm going to come up here and click on that. And now I want to say, come down here to this lower button that says environment variables, click on that. And now this window comes up and I have uh, user variables for my user account or down here I have system variables. So I want to come down to the system variables and on the path, I want to come up here, click on that. And now I'm going to add in a new path and I'm going to paste that in 
And what's very important for it to find the executables, you have to do slash bin. So this is a very, very easy step to forget. So you want to go in there and make sure that not only you're setting the Java home, but also the slash bin to the path. So this is what Windows is going to be using to look for executable files. So we'll go ahead and set that. And I'm going to say, click on OK here. Now, while we are here, some Java programs are going to be looking for a variable called Java Home. So here, what I can do is I can click on New for New System Variable. And I want to do Java underscore Home. This is fairly standard for Java programs to look for an environment variable called Java Home. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that value in. And in this case, we do not do the slash bin. We are going to do Java Home. And I mistyped that there. Whoops. Java Home, not Haim. <laughs> Sorry about that. So here, we do not put the bin folder. We want the uh, directory for the JDK itself. So that there's additional subfolders under there that some programs need to reference. And any program that's looking for Java Home is going to know that for the executables, it has to look in the bin folder. So now I'm just going to say OK here and OK there. Click that and close that out. Now, once Java is installed on our system, it should be available for our use. I'm going to show you from the command line how we can verify that we do have the JDK installed properly and it's working. And there are two Java commands that we can use from the command line. One is Java, just simple uh, Java, and we are going to use minus V to get the version of it. And that will tell us that the Java executable is available on our command line on our path. So it tells us that Java is installed. The other command is Java C. So a Java with a C at the end, this is the Java compiler and do a Java C minus V for the version of it. That will tell us that the Java compiler is installed. It's a, a pretty easy mistake to make to install just the Java runtime, the JRE and not the JDK. And if you have installed just the JRE, if you do Java C, you will get an error saying that Java C is not found. But if you've properly installed the Java JDK, Java C will exist and you'll get output from that. So by using Java, Java C minus V, that tells us the version of the Java compiler installed on the system. Now I want to verify that Java is installed and working properly on the system. So what I can do is come down here to the search bar and just uh, click there and say CMD. And that is for the command prompt. And so I want to get to the command line here. I'm going to just hit that and hit enter. And now you can see that I'm at the command prompt. And all I want to do here is do Java minus V for version. And actually version, sorry about that. Uh, you have to spell out version for that. So now you can see that I'm finding Java. It is 11.0.5, the one that I did install. And this is effectively the JVM. So this is what actually runs Java code. Now to compile Java code, I want to check Java C and it will also do version like so. And now you can see that I'm, I am getting a response back from the Java C. So this tells me that on this system, I do have the JDK installed. Java is the runtime. Java C is the Java compiler and the Java compiler is not included with the, the Java runtime. So if you install the JRE, Java C will not work. But here, by having Java C version and getting a response back, we know that this is now valid. So I could do something like Java minus version. And here, if you had not installed the JDK, you would see this, but it would be for Java C is not a recognized internal command. However, I do have Java C installed and we are getting a response back from that executable. Now that we have Java installed and have verified that it's installed properly, we want to go out and get the IntelliJ IDE. This is freely available from JetBrains, so we have to go out to the JetBrains site and download it to our, our computer system here. And uh, for the purposes of this, I am going to be using the uh, IntelliJ Community Edition. So if you're a beginning Java developer, the Community Edition is perfectly fine, and that's what we are going to go out and grab from the JetBrains site and download to our computer. Now I want to go ahead and install IntelliJ. The first thing I need to do is go get the executable. So I'm going to come up here to, to Chrome. You can use whatever browser you'd like. 
and I am just going to search on IntelliJ Windows. And here you can see that the first hit is download IntelliJ IDEA. So I'm going to click on that link. And now you can see that I have Ultimate and uh, Community. Now you can get a free trial for Ultimate, but if you're just a beginning Java developer, no reason for that. So I'm just going to come up here and click on this and I'm going to download the executable file and this will bring down the installer to my, my operating system. Now that the download is complete, we can run the installer, which is going to install IntelliJ onto our computer system here so that we can start using it. When the download completes, since I grabbed the executable, I can just come over here and double click on it and this is going to open it up and Windows will ask me if I'd like to install it. And it's going to take a second for it to come up and now you can see uh, I am asked if I want to allow this app to make changes to my system and I'm going to say yes because I want to install this. And now we can see that I have the setup dialog and I am going to close Chrome out from the background so we can see this a little bit easier. You can see that I have the IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition set up. So I'm going to, just going to click on Next to continue and installing it in Program Files, JetBrains, uh, perfectly fine. So I am going to proceed with that uh, recommended location. And here we can see that it, it is asking us for a, a couple things here. So I am going to go ahead and install the 64-bit launcher. Uh, I'll add in, open up folder as project. And here, this the .java, so that is the Java extension for Java source files. And then also we can set up the alternative JVM languages for Groovy and Kotlin. So I'll go ahead and take those as well. And I don't think I need to update the path variable. So I am going to go ahead and say next on this. And it's going to give us a new start menu folder. So I'll go ahead and take JetBrains for that. And this is going to go through the installation process right now. It's copying over a bunch of files from the installer into our Windows operating system. So I'm going to pause the video and come back to this when it completes. This is going to take a minute for all these files to get uncompressed and installed into the Windows system. At this point, IntelliJ is completely uh, finished. And what I can do is just say finish here. I'm going to click on finish. I'm not going to run it at this time. I'm just going to click on finish to exit the installer. And uh, we can see that the installer did create a shortcut on the desktop to access IntelliJ. Now, the first time that you run IntelliJ, it's going to come up and ask you some questions about how to set it up for your configuration. I'm going to go through now and show you uh, some commonly selected stuff, uh, some, some things you probably won't need, and we'll just go st uh, step through the uh, menu of options and get IntelliJ configured for your use. Now, to start up IntelliJ, I'm just going to click on the icon here, double click on that to go ahead and start up the community edition of IntelliJ. It's going to take a second for it to initialize. And here, IntelliJ is going to ask to import settings. So this is brand new installed, so I don't have any settings to bring in. So I'm just going to say OK there. If you uh, were previously using it, you would have the option to bring over your current settings. So I'm not going to import any settings here. And we'll click through and say that I agree with this. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, send use of st uh, statistics to JetBrains. This does not include personal data. So I think it helps them improve the product because I see uh, how the product is being used and what features are, are being used so they can focus on those better. So I'm going to go ahead and send those. And here you get to select the theme. I've been using the uh, Darkula theme lately. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on that. And here... The next is going to default plugin. So IntelliJ does have a number of plugins. I'm going to go ahead and configure those. And let's customize the build tools. I never use Ant, but I do use Maven and Gradle. So let's go ahead and save those. Uh, version control. Rarely use uh, Mercado, GitHub, GitHub. Uh, Subversion, I, I almost never see that anymore. So I'm going to unselect that. So by disabling these plugins, you are going to make IntelliJ use a little bit less memory and be a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to save these changes and go back. Test tools. I don't personally use TestNG. Uh, a lot of people love it. 
Uh, I've been using JUnit 5 lately, so we'll go ahead and go with that. Uh, swing, I'm just going to disable Swing because I don't use that. Uh, Android, if you need Android development, uh, go ahead and enable it. I am going to disable that. And here, uh, I'm going to come up here on Other Build Tools. I'm going to say Customize That. Uh, I want bytecode. I don't need task management. XLT is nice. If you're an Eclipse user, you can uh, enable this. I am not going to enable that. And YAML, Java Stream Debugger, these are all good things to have. I'm going to save changes. And then finally, plugin development. If you're going to be developing a plugin for IntelliJ, you want to enable this. But I am going to go ahead and disable that because we really don't need that. And then next to featured plugins. So I don't need Scala at this point in time. Uh, a Vim editor, I don't need that. And then uh, Idea Features Trainer. If you are new, uh, you might want to uh, install this because there are a number of shortcuts and stuff that can be utilized. I am not going to install that uh, with this installation. So I'm just going to go in here and click on Start Using IntelliJ. And you can see that it does take uh, a few seconds for IntelliJ to initialize. And you can see now that I'm up on the screen here, I can say, create new project, and this is going to create a brand new Java project. And I can just say, next, I'm not going to bring in Groovy or Kotlin. Just go next, and I'm going to just say, I'm just going to say test project there. And you can see here, it is going to default to my user home, and then idea projects. And I'm calling this test project, so I'm just going to finish that. And I'm going to close out the tips of the day. And you can see down at the bottom there, I was waiting for a second, IntelliJ is going through doing indexing. So I'm going to pause the video until that indexing is complete. What it's doing, it's going out and building an index of things that it knows about your system. So this can take a moment to run. So I'm going to pause this video until that is complete. So indexing is complete, and IntelliJ is now at the initial project view screen. And the one thing I want to check on here is I'm going to come up to this uh, project structure here, click on that. And we see that uh, Java was found, so it's got the Java 11, the 11.5. So that's the one part that I want to make sure. And here you can also say set the language level. That's also set to Java 11, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to click on OK. I just wanted to verify that uh, was installed. Sometimes uh, the ID might not find the uh, Java installation, you'll have to actually point it to it and, and tell it where it's at. But here, uh, we did find Java okay, so now IntelliJ is now ready to go and start developing Java.